Remarketing audiences are a great way to continue to influence users who have engaged with your brand already. On LinkedIn, most of the ways that we used to make retargeting audiences would be either through customer or account list uploads or through website lists that always relied on using URL rules to determine who should be and shouldn't be in the list based on the URLs they'd seen. Recently, LinkedIn announced website actions, which allows you to create lists based on the actual actions that people took on the site. That means that LinkedIn's insight tag is smart enough to not only know the page URLs that people are on, but it also knows the text of the buttons that they've clicked on, so you have some of the actions that they've taken. In this video, we wanna walk you through how you can use website actions to create new retargeting lists and start having a little bit higher quality lists to get it back in front of those people and continue influencing them. We're in one of our clients' live LinkedIn ads accounts, and that's what we're gonna be using for the entirety of this video. So there will be a number of places where things are blurred out because we need to protect their privacy, but we'll do our best to make sure that you can see as much as possible during this build process. As I mentioned in the intro, the LinkedIn Insight tag is going to be the source of all of these new website actions. So before you get started in any way, make sure that you have your Insight tag added to your site. If you don't, you can come over here to Analyze. Insight tag is right at the top, and then you'll have three options for how you can apply that, whether it's yourself directly on your site's code, if you need to send the tag to a developer or an agency, then you can also use Tag Manager. Each of these are very simple, but you must utilize the LinkedIn Insight tag to take advantage of the website actions. Once you have that set up to create an audience, we need to go into the Plan and Audience section. We're going to create an audience, and then we're going to retarget by website. Now, before we get into the new process, I wanna show you what the old process used to look like and the process that you can refer back to if you need to. Down here at the bottom, you'll see the or manually enter page URLs. If we click on that, this returns you to the builder that we've had for almost the entirety of LinkedIn ads. You can choose the duration of your audience, whether it's 14 days up to 180 days, and then you get to build your audiences based on the pages that they interacted with. And all of these are based only on URL rules. We do have three functions. You can choose URLs that equal exactly what you input, what they start with, or text that they contain. Then you're able to add all of that information based on the logic rules you want to into this field. You can then create and statements saying that somebody has to be on a URL that follows this starts with rule and also contains and then adds in a different word or string. And then you could also create an or rule, meaning that somebody needs to match any of the criteria you added up here, or they match a URL that matches any of the criteria down below. Depending on how your website is set up and the different types of combinations of pages that you're trying to create on LinkedIn, this can be a pretty cumbersome process. I'll admit it is highly flexible and very customizable, but setting things up only on URL rules can be a bit limiting. And if you have lots of different types of actions or pages you're trying to track, making sure that you have the logic accurate in each of these different stages can be a challenge. And that's where website actions come in. I do think they simplify things quite a bit. And we can actually return to that builder just by scrolling down and then clicking the select from website actions table. As you'll remember, this is what the default builder is going to look like moving forward. You have to manually go back to the other one. So if you're trying to create your first LinkedIn audience in a while and it looks like this, this is why. You still have the opportunity to name your audience as you always would and the look back windows are gonna be the same anywhere from 14 days to 180 days. Now, how we build the audiences are gonna be a bit different. And there are two key pieces that I wanna point out. The first is going to be the highest level decider, and that's gonna be over here under domain. Right now, we are on the main domain for this brand. And again, I'm sorry, these are gonna be blurred out, but this brand also has subdomains that their insight tag tracks. So if we wanted to track anything on any of those subdomains, we could click from the drop down here choose that domain and start to create an audience based on that. Now, from what I can tell on the outside, you can only create audiences based on one domain at a time. So depending on who you're trying to retarget, which domain they're on, make sure that you have the naming convention for your audience clearly stating which domain you're using and not something more general like 
all users when one subdomain could be a completely different user set than another domain. Once you've selected the site that you want to create an audience for, we now come over to the biggest difference between the previous website audience builders and the new option with website actions. And this is going to be how you build your audience. You can build it based on buttons or on pages. For now, let's stick on buttons and start to look at the different buttons that are available on this specific site. Each of these line items is going to be a button that is on the website for our client. You'll be able to see the name of the button or the text that shows up on the website. And then you'll be able to see how many pages that button appears on or that button text appears on. This first one appears on three pages. The second one is on 99 pages and the third is on two pages. You'll also then see the number of estimated clicks within the last 30 days for each of those individual buttons. As you can see for this client, the first three highest volume buttons are based on login. But if we scroll down, we will see some additional options here, whether it's somebody going to a next slide, probably in some form of content. There's another login for a different brand. There's a contact us button, submit, people going to the platform, the about page. That request option is request a demo. All of these are going to be different pages and buttons that show up on the site. Now, one thing I wanna call out is that just because something is called a button on this portion of the builder in LinkedIn, that does not mean something is actually a button in the way that this next step option is a button. Now, I can't take you to the client site because that's gonna to be too much crossing potentially a privacy barrier, but I can tell you that our platform and the insights and resources that you see here, those are actually links in the main website navigation. These are not buttons in the traditional sense. So even though LinkedIn is calling these buttons, think of each of these as an actual link that somebody clicks on your website that would take them to an additional page on your site. Speaking of pages, if you wanted to create audiences based on that, you would just need to click the pages option and then you'll be given the list of URLs on this website rather than the links or the buttons that they could click to get there. Now, I'm definitely not going to go through and scroll through any of these, but just know that the process and the build looks the same. But what we end up seeing here is going to be the page name in the top bold letters for each of these different pieces. And then down below, you'll see the actual URL in slightly smaller text, but you will be able to cross reference the page name and the actual URL to make sure you're targeting the right one. For now, let's jump back to buttons because I think it has the best use case for this. You'll remember that when I scrolled through this list previously, a handful of them were login pages. This company is trying to generate new customers with their LinkedIn ads, but occasionally they do target users who are existing customers to try and get them to come to customer events, let them know about platform releases, all that good stuff. So a login audience is really valuable to us in both the targeting and exclusion point of view. So I'm gonna create a login audience based on all of the login buttons and pages available on this site. So let me go ahead and name my audience. And now let's start to build the audience. Just like with the manual page URLs, you can opt into multiple different buttons or pages. All you have to do is check the box next to them and they'll all be added into your audience. But one of the things that I really like about this builder is that you can actually use the search function here to find all of the buttons with a similar name. I've already selected the top three that show up here, but each of these follows the naming convention of log in as two different words. But I know for a fact that there are some places where log in is one word. So I could come up here and search for log in as one word. And here you'll see a handful of new pages that can pop up. All of these have much smaller numbers of clicks associated with it. So I would have had to scroll through a huge list to get here, but instead all I have to do is type this in check the box next to all of the relevant login pages that follow this naming convention, and they'll be added to my list. If I wanted to, I could filter for the login with a space included, and then I would be able to scroll through this list and add all of the different brands and pages that are eligible in here. For the sake of the person editing this video, I went ahead and did that off camera. And now let's click next step. I've already added everybody who clicked on a login button into my audience. And if you needed to make changes to that, you could click the edit button right here and it'll take you right back to the builder that we were on. And just for fun, I went ahead and unselected one of the high volume 
buttons that was in there. And when I did that, you'll see that LinkedIn has a suggestion that we should include this same login button. If you've gone through and added in all of your different buttons, pages, all that good stuff, and LinkedIn thinks that you missed something, they will create a suggested section here. From what I can tell, it's pretty accurate. And you can either click to add all, dismiss all, or you can click the button on the specific action that you want to add, and it'll be added to the list. The last thing you can do is filter out pages from your tracking or track only specific types of buttons. If you feel confident in how everything is set up, you can leave this toggled off. But if you wanted to turn it on, you can see here that you can exclude pages based on the URL that they either equal, start with, or contain. And then you could add in a new URL. You could check a box that says track only buttons that submit a form. So think about those insights and resources or our platform pages that I mentioned earlier. If you check that box, those types of buttons, quote unquote buttons, will not be included in the button clicks because it's not technically a form. The other option is to track only specific pages. The functionality here remains the same, but rather than excluding pages from your audience, you are focusing and narrowing in on only a specific subset of pages. So for whatever reason, we wanted to track only people who clicked a login button on a handful of pages. We can do that by simply creating the URL rules here, and then it'll be all set. For now, I'm actually gonna create this audience for this client. So I'm gonna turn this off because I don't wanna have any filters, exclusions, anything like that. And then once you're done, you'll just need to click agree and create. You'll see here that it can take up to 48 hours on rare occasion longer for your audience to process and start delivering. So you could apply this audience to a campaign right away and it'll start serving once it's processed. But again, I'm actually gonna make this. So just click agree and create, and then it'll show up in your audience manager in the exact same way any other website audience would. You'll be able to add it to your campaigns in the audiences section of the campaign creation process. Overall, I'm a big fan of this new functionality. Depending on your client's websites and how complex they are, it can be really difficult to create retargeting lists based on actions that people take that you feel confident are tracking literally every instance of that action. But I think with website actions, it's a lot easier to do that if for no other reason than because you have the search function that you can use on buttons and pages. And then you can also create either exclusions for those rules or targeting only specific pages. In my mind, this is a huge upgrade and one of the better retargeting systems I've seen from quite frankly, any of the platforms. And hopefully this will make it easier for you to reach exactly the right people you're trying to on LinkedIn. If you have any additional questions about the website actions for audience building or anything else on the LinkedIn platform, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.